Ah! I see! And then, can I reverse this? As I'm on top of it? Ho 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 ho! Not your average elevator. I am clever enough to figure that one out. Thank you, me. Alright, I'm hearing those chronon disturbances. Hello! I think they should have done a better job at getting their chronon particles, because obviously there's here? a lot of these going on around. How many particles do I have now? We have... We have four upgrade points available, which means I actually could grab one of these, increase my time stop, size, increase how long my focus time will last, or I can... Oh, I can get an upgrade for this. Increase the damage radius. That does sound like fun, but we're gonna go for increased time size, time stop size, because I use that a little bit more often. And then when I get it so he up activates three times per fight, that'll be even better. Jack, I found documents here about some kind of private gala Marnak is hosting tonight. Tonight? After everything that's happened? It has something to do with their future plans. Serene's delivering a speech and the guest list has everybody from monarch higher-ups to big shot scientists to the mayor of Riverport, which raises the question, why now? I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. Ooh. Good thing I jumped down here. I saw the opening and said, that's probably there a grown go. in there. That was right. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on trying to get all these upgrade points. I wonder if there's gonna be an excess. There's probably just enough Cronin points, uh, Cronin sources, to fill up all of your abilities. So if I don't find every single one of these, we're gonna be in a little bit of a trouble spot. I'm gonna have like one ability left to upgrade at the end of the game, and I'm like, shit, I missed a Cronin source. No! And I'm gonna be really sad. Hmm. Oh, we're directly above where I need to go. Okay. <laughs> I was looking over the gap going, that doesn't seem very good. So, am I just not gonna be able to get the Cronin source that's over here? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just gonna hope that it's like the other one. We'll come back around the side of the building and boom! Hey, we found the Cronin source! Oh, we totally didn't know it was there all this time. Whoa! -ho. Is there a charge limit? Oh, I can do the dash twice. Okay, I haven't really okay. looked at that. Getting closer, I think. Now, which way's the dry dock? I got that briefcase we lifted from William Joyce's car. Laid out the contents in the trailer. You want me to go through? No, no. Serene wants the first look. Look. Till then, hands off. Okay. Looks like the trailer this has power now. Hey. Filling in for Bobby Radford. Bobby's taking a little break for health reasons. I'm sure you'll all join me in wishing him a speedy recovery. Just take all the time you need, Bobby. We've got your back. Now, not to get too serious on you right out of the gate, but here's the latest on the awful tragedy down at Riverport University. The authorities are now looking for Jack Joyce, believed to be the mastermind behind the terrorist action at the university and personally responsible for several deaths. Details are still scarce, but it's believed Joyce's own brother, William Joyce, is among the dead. Little about Joyce is known yet, but given the actions of the activist group he was part of, it is now clear that allowing the anti-corporate protest to continue has backfired at a great human cost. Joyce's current whereabouts are unknown. Fortunately, security personnel from Monarch Solutions were on site and managed to intervene, saving countless lives. We'll keep you updated as this story develops. And now, some music. Well, there's the next phase. Say that Monarch Security was there and have them support you. Huh. <laughs> Trailer generator crapped okay. itself. Hooked up the car. Use that until maintenance gets around to use this. <laughs> that thing is gonna be dead. And need a reboot soon. All right. So, ah, there we go. <laughs> According to my crosshair, my vision crosshair, there's like three fucking sources just around this area alone. We just found one of them. 
I can't see a second one just yet, so I guess we'll we'll run into it soon. Paul's men had taken the briefcase from Will's car, dumped the contents on the table. Will had said he needed something from his briefcase to stop the fracture. Wasn't much there but his phone and a key to the Bradbury swimming pool. Not the most obvious clues. Jack, it's Beth. Monarch just got footage of your lady friend sniffing around some confidential Monarch files. Kind of a big no-no around here. Amy, I gotta go back for her. Don't. I'll pick her up. Where are you? I'm on my way to Paul at the dry docks. Serene's not the priority. I'm getting you out of there. I'll meet you at the dry docks. Channel 1 is the Monarch frequency. Use it to keep ahead of them. And Jack? Don't do anything stupid. I am oh, all about the stupid. Confidence. All right, what do we got? From Bruce Livingstone, my screenplay! Okay, well, let's see. Who's he? Oh, this is one of those really long ones. What the hell? Dr. Amaral, we haven't talked too much, but I'm one of Serene's guys from Reaper Squad. Working around all this time tech stuff, or chronon tech you call it, I guess, got me real inspired. So I started writing a screenplay. There's a lot of science talk in here, so I want a scientist to check it out and make sure it kind of makes sense. Would you mind taking a look? Here's the first half. Time Knife, written by Bruce Livingstone. Act 1. Amy, you okay out there? Shit. Bruce Savage stands in his office. He is sick. <laughs> he is sexually... <laughs> He is sexually attractive. Bruce, buddy, I think you're making it a little bit too obvious. Somebody knocks on Bruce's door and he opens it. It's a scientist lady. She looks like a librarian with glasses, but she is actually a scientist. You can tell because she has a lab coat. Lady scientist, help me, Bruce. Okay. Take this knife because some bad apples are trying to steal it and it is very important. Okay. What is your name, handsome? I'm Bruce. Let's shake hands. Bruce and Lady Scientist shake hands. Wow, he almost broke my hand with that handshake. You're definitely a tough guy. She is impressed with Bruce's strength. She looks at his large biceps like they are delicious pieces of ham, but she doesn't want to eat them. Here is the knife. The Lady Scientist hands Bruce the knife. It looks mostly like a knife, but also like a time machine because it is both a knife and a time machine, but Bruce doesn't know that yet. Goons break the windows and shoot the scientist lady. She dies. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this screenplay's uh, right going out a little bit more interesting than the game so far. <laughs> she dies. Avenge me. Okay. I want to be Bruce Savage. Bruce Savage is a fucking badass, and he's sexually attractive. Bruce kills the goons with his legs by doing lots of kicking at them. They are dead real quick. Looks like I got a leg up on you guys. The audience probably laughs here, so Bruce waits to deliver his next line for around five seconds so that everybody is calmed down. What is so special about this knife? Bruce stabs the knife into his chair. The chair disappears. The chair disappeared. He looks at a picture on his wall, which is a big photograph from 1932 with lots of picture from 1932 in it. Bruce's chair is <laughs> This is so stupid. Bruce's chair is in the picture. Interesting. My chair traveled back in time to 1932 when I stabbed it. When I stab things, they travel through time. That also explains why this knife looks like a knife, but also a time machine. Because it is both. Bruce's real goofy friend from across the hall runs into the room. He trips on something on he trips on something on the floor. His name is Slabo. He isn't as fat as his name sounds. Oh yeah. That is Slabo's catchy phrase, and he says it in a real funny way. Scientist lady. Bruce, you saved my life. The scientist lady was only faking being dead. Are you married? Only to my job. I find that attractive, but also respectable. She kisses Bruce's cheek. What about my cheek? Aw, oh, man. That is Slobo's other catchphrase, which he says in a different but equally funny way. Bruce waits a few seconds for the audience to stop laughing before speaking. Wait, those lips were man lips, not woman lips. 
Bruce pulls off the scientist lady's wig. She is actually Bruce's boss, Paul Marine. Paul Marine is a douche. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I do agree with that statement. Paul is a douche. My boss, but why? I wanted to kill you. I wanted you to kill those guys before they wanted me dead. Or because they wanted me dead. I knew you were real tough so you could kill them easy. But I don't respect you as an employee, so I always make you do the shitty jobs, even though you've been working at my company more than most other guys and are real smart. Also, I don't like you because my girlfriend finds you sexually attractive. Now I understand. Give me my time knife back. Paul Marine snaps his finger and 73 goons surround Bruce. You can't kill 73 goons, so just give up. I don't have time for this. Bruce stabs himself with a time knife and disappears. He time traveled using or he time traveled using the time knife. Bruce opens the door. Now he is twice as jacked. <laughs> You're even more sexually attractive. How is this possible? I stabbed myself and traveled to the past, then trained in all kinds of martial arts to become even stronger. I also strapped explosives into everybody's boots in the past so that when I press the Satanator, you'll all explode. Aw, yeah! I'm glad I have stocks in this company. Why? Because business is booming. Bruce, uh, Bruce presses the detonator. All 73 goons blow up like eggs in a microwave. Paul Mar Marine doesn't explode. Huh. Luckily, I used my metal detector this morning and found the explosives. So I switched boots th with somebody else. Say, Slabo, whose boots are you wearing? No! Slabo explodes. My best friend. You'll pay for this. You don't want to stab me with that time knife. Why not? Because I am actually you from the future. That doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. Remember that the time knife is also a time machine. I am you from the future, but I stabbed myself with a time knife in order to come back here and do all this. But we don't look the same. That is a good point, and I am glad you brought it up. First, I time traveled 700 years to the, to the future, where humans have created advanced technology that allows surgeries and completely changed people's faces and bodies. I had this surgery performed so that you wouldn't be able to recognize me, but I am actually you in disguise. I can prove it, because I know many things about you. Like what? You have a birthmark on your left angle. I do have a birthmark on my left angle. I am starting to believe you now. You should. Because even though I have a new body, I kept that birthmark on my ankle so that when I met you, I could prove that I was actually you from the future. I will show you. Paul lifts up the left leg of his pants, but there is no birthmark. Instead, there is an ankle holster for a gun. Paul pulls out the gun and aims it at Bruce. <laughs> I was lying this whole time. I'm not actually you. I was just saying all that so I could get to my gun. Son of a bitch. Also, in the future, I melted the time knife and turned it into bullets. Those bullets are now in my gun, which means that I can shoot you, but also send you through time all at once. Finally, you will be out of my way so that I can marry my girlfriend, Sophine, later today before you're able to tell her that I'm a real shitty guy. I didn't know you were getting married today. I know. My girlfriend, Sophine, made an invitation for you because she admires you and thinks you're attractive, but I destroyed the invitation and then lied to her and I said I gave it to you at work. But now I'm here to give you a different invitation. To your funeral. Paul Marine shoots at Bruce. Slavo jumps in front of Bruce. No! Slavo wasn't actually dead. He jumps in front of the bullets and is shot several times. Now he's actually dying. Avenge me. Okay. Bruce goes to attack Paul Marine. But now Paul Marine has disappeared. He's gone. Slavo is dying on the ground, covered in blood. His body is red like a hot dog covered in lots of ketchup. You... Er, you must stop the wedding. You are totally a better guy and clearly more attractive than Paul. You should be dating his girlfriend, Sophine. Slavo dies. Bruce just sits there next to Slavo for a while because many people will be crying at this point. He eventually gets up. Looks like I'm going to a wedding, after all. He holds out the time knife. Somebody's gotta cut the cake. Cut the cake means he's gonna kill Paul. The audience will understand because of the way the actor says it. It is a real intense moment. Bruce puts on his shades. End of Act 1. I want to see more of this. This needs to be an actual movie. Because Bruce Savage sounds awesome. And I hope Safine appreciated the work put into that screenplay. Alright, fucking back to the game, I guess. Real story, real time. Okay, to Martin Hatch from Clary's Ogawa. The university operation gathered far more attention than we expected. How does this impact our agenda moving forward? 
I'm concerned that Paul Serene will be playing, paying closer attention to our actions. Perhaps we should delay making our move until things calm down. Nothing changes. We move forward. The university fallout was a setback, but we can use those <laughs> I've heard Martin Hatch in something else, but I don't remember what it is <laughs> in terms of his actor. But I love his voice. The university fallout was a setback. We can use the, uh, these complications to our advantage. Paul is focused on phase three of the plan. He is questioning if there are traitors within Monarch, but I am confident that he, uh, he does not know where to look for them. I will make sure to shift the blame elsewhere. The gala is our going ahead tonight. That is when we will make our move. You take care of preparations. Make sure Dr. Kim's lab is ready for detonation. I will make sure that Paul is sufficiently distracted as to not question our involvement. Ooh. Alright, Monarch is getting up to some shady shit all around the board. Just goes to show you, Paul's made some very bad choices. And it's taken him 17 years to not even realize that. You see, when you're the the corporate leader or the CEO of a company of dicks, everyone's gonna be just like you. They follow your example, man. Or they could just be evil anyways. They're going to blow up the lab and that's gonna fuck up time itself. That's suspicious. Yeah, I totally wanna go next to that door with all the explosive barrels in it. Totally, absolutely. Even though there are chrono things directly behind me. Whoa, hello! We got one of them! Well, under that implication, I might have actually legitimately missed a chronon source in the last place. Yeah, well... I'm not touching that. Oh, it wants me to blow it up myself! Okay. Whoops. I'll take it. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Close one. I'm like Bruce HQ, Savage. We just heard an explosion near the harvesting perimeter. Yeah, take a wild guess who that could have been. Charlie, get off the line. <laughs> Striker team, take defensive positions around ground zero. Roger. <laughs> All right. I can't get past here until I reverse time. Although I'm not a big fan of reversing time. With a bunch of explosives around the corner. So I should probably hurry. Ooh. I almost got crushed. Wouldn't have been good for my health or my complexion. Oh! Pause for the audience to laugh. Because that explosion creates a lot of heat and light. Almost like the sun. And so, technically, it might be able to actually... Tan your skin. <sighs> Wait, I recognized Will's workshop as uh -oh. soon as I saw the old billboard on top. The area we refer to as Ground Zero. It was clear that the workshop was at the center of the Monarch operation. I wanted to see what was in there, and it seemed to be the only way to the dry docks answering. Interesting. Got the word. Safeguard squads checking out that explosion. Striker team is establishing a defensive perimeter around Ground Zero. An entire striker team? For one guy? University incident got HQ wetting their pants. Kid's gonna get torn apart like a goddamn pinata. So the lady that's interviewing us is named Clarice, and we just read an interview with her involved in it. She's gonna be up to some shit! <laughs> but let's get to action! We gotta shoot everybody! Ow. I hurt myself on the way down. That's okay, though. It's that guy from the university! Concise that point is. It's the guy from the university! You mean the guy you were already hired to fucking kill? It's Jack Joyce! The terrorist! Backup approaching green zone. Uh -oh. Engaging target. Yeah, I think not. I'm surprised he didn't just die from that. This is a lot of bullets flying his way. And now he's dead. Hey there! And 
Edge, you're alive! Wow. I was gonna say, hey, you're gone. But he was not! I think you ran over your friend. I'm gonna make sure they're dead. <sighs> nice driving, guys. <laughs> they couldn't take me out in time, and now they're all for sure gonna be gone. Although, just in case, and boop, bullet flying towards the head. Bullet flying towards the head, bullet flying towards the head. All right. Well, as much as I want to, uh... Oh, hey, you heard people behind me. Anyways, oh, I guess my bullets aren't gonna fly into them. That's fine. As much as I want to move forward, I also want to explore a little bit because Chrono Trigger... Wait, no, that's a game. Chronon Source, yeah. There might be one in this area. Although, as a combat place, it might actually not have anything here because that would be a nicer decision for the game developer to have. Okay. Then we just get out of here. And everything would be totally fine because nobody can, but me can move during stutters, right? Ooh, semi. Or a car run rifle. Hey. I'll take it. I mean, I like the shotgun, but this is a different kind of weapon. Whoa. That is fucking trippy. Did not notice that before. Uh, okay. Well, we're just gonna climb over this car that's currently moving very quickly and get the fuck out of here. Oh boy! men to move through stutters. You knew the fracture would occur. Prepared for it. Oh, shit. And he never tried to stop it. Maybe he knew it was gonna happen. Maybe he knew that as a time thing, it was gonna loop constantly. But can they move through my time stops? Yes, they can. Oh, shit. That's bad. A lot of my combat abilities just don't work on them. But bullets don't work on them, so I'm happy about that. Here, have a time blast! Yeah, he died. He did. <laughs> oh, I blew up your device on the back! <laughs> now that I know about that, that makes things a little bit easier. Gonna just go ahead and do this. Give me my health back. <laughs> okay, I want to try something. Can they live when there's a stutter within a stutter? Yes, they can. Huh. Will never told you what he did in that workshop at Ground Zero? No, never. He hid that part of his life from me. Nothing prepared me for the weirdness that was waiting there. And even that was just a prelude to the bad stuff that would follow in that same place later. Well, that's good to know. Not so much about the stuff that was just talked about, but good to know that there are enemies that can really fuck with us. Can't use, like, one of my abilities. I'd like to use everything else. I can still slow down time even within stutters. Whoa. Well, that was kind of creepy. Absolutely no entry. Well, I'm pretty sure that's more of a guideline than a rule. Yeah, right? Otherwise it would say, like, you will die if you go this way. Then that'd be more of a threat. I'm surprised there's no fucking Chronon sources around here. Whoa! What the hell? What is this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? hell? What, is, what this? is this? That already happened. Well, welcome to more time shenanigans. Things we should have been expecting to happen, but are now finally happening. Oh, what Jesus. The 
fuck. Well, I guess that's what happens when you're traveling further to Ground Zero. We're seeing all kinds of different moments of time that happen to this place. <laughs> that's gonna mind fuck us. I specifically requested copper clad Niobium. Well. Oh god. It's just gonna keep on shifting. What happened here, Will? There's no words to describe it. Will was gone, but... He was all around me. This entire secret life he'd never talked about. Everything he tried to protect me from. It surrounded me. A puzzle. Trapped in broken time. And this is probably where he built the we prototype. He wasted his research grant, his career, obsessing over some failed experiment. That's what he led us to believe. What he built there, it never failed. It works. It works. What happened here? It works, and then I mean my grant extended another year. Somebody fucked it up. Please, don't do this. We know Paul Serene had something to do with it. He came in here six years ago, either as his young self or his older self, and fucked it all up. It would have to have been like his younger self. I hope to God this works. Will. Or not. It's gone. It could have been the order form just kind of coming in here while Will was like asleep or something. Not inside of this place. Oh. What oh. the fuck? I guess you're by exercise. You're the only other one who's seen what I've seen. Do I don't? Give me the advice. I knew something went horribly wrong there, but it was scrambled. It's impossible to crack. What the fuck is going on, man? Everything's just tripping me out. So Beth apparently is seen the end of time, and we're gonna have a showdown here later on, where she's gonna be very conflicted about her choices. But what really happened here? I guess we'll find out later. Riverport hexes. Oh, Rexes. Oh, they have a dinosaur as their sport person. Huh. Awesome. Also, apparently that's going to affect the game or the story somewhere. That's funny, because we just randomly touched that object. Huh. And is this Liam being arrested? Hmm. Maybe Beth comes back through time at some point and just kind of makes all this. She knows what's going on, right? She knows about the fracture, possible future events, but she obviously isn't as uh, is well informed as Paul Serene. Every unanswered question I had was compounded by what I'd seen at that workshop. The events at the university were part of something much bigger. Something that had started 17 years ago. They must have had a lot of resources dedicated to something. Just like, yeah, just make the fucking lighting go fucking bananas for just the entire level. Okay? Can we do that? Good. Leaving ground zero. Oh, thank God. I don't have to be as mind fucked for a okay. while. Okay, dry dock. Get to the dry dock. I'm almost there. Gotta get to Paul. Still have all these Cronon sources around here that I haven't seen. Ugh. Trespasser alert. Amy Ferraro is in the goddamn security station unsupervised. 
my understanding was that Amy Farrell was supposed to be a record was, uh, was supposed to be recording a series of false confessions for our PR campaign. Clearly, that's not the case. How do I know she's unsupervised? Because A, she's in the goddamn security station, B, she's digging through sensitive monarch files and transferring them to his USB stick. No big deal, just you know, all of Monarch's secrets! Uh, I thought you were gonna do a C. Radio alert is already in effect. Converge on our location immediately. Do not let that USB stick leave this operation. Oh, and remember Jack Joyce? The guy you were supposed to stop from turning our operation into a clusterfuck? Maybe get on that while we still have an operation left. Can you just act like this was your natural environment? You know, like a high school locker room, and he's the kid who can read a full sentence without moving his lips? Just fuck him up. <laughs> all right, all right. I hope we get to punch Charlie in the future. But it's probably not gonna happen. Oh, we got enemies ahead of us. Lovely. Oh. I see that. I see the source. Was there a source in that room that I just never went into it? We haven't been in that room yet. That's that's the thing. Okay, alright. <laughs> I'm going paranoid, man. I don't know if I've missed things or if they're gonna be in the future. And that goes for the story as well. <laughs> I'm a little bit sad that I can't have, like, a shotgun as well as my carbine. That would've been nice. Or, like, choose to have the assault rifle versus everything else. Uh-oh. Hey, guys! Enemy spotted. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 don't do that. I said stop. There was something wrong with Paul. Cronon Syndrome. He'd had his powers much longer than me. What was the cause? Was I sick as well, or was it his time travel? I didn't know. It didn't make anything he'd done any less hateful. Ah, we get to do some research on the research. Ah, uh, let's see, Dr. Kim's lab and Serene's treatment. To Sophia Amaral from Fiona Miller. Oh, f I guess Fiona, yeah, yeah, that chick who delivered the sandwiches. Dr. Amaral, would it be possible for me to gain access to Dr. Kim's lab in order to research my, for any files that might assist in our research? I am concerned about the slow progress in developing a permanent cure for Paul Cerrone's Cronin Syndrome. The, tr the treatments are only a temporary solution. I know that Dr. Kim was close to discovering a cure at the time of his death. I know that you used this lab to administer Paul Serene's treatments, but if I could borrow your keycard during the gala tonight, perhaps I could investigate this further while everybody's occupied with other matters. Fiona, I share your concern. Paul's treatments are becoming increasingly ineffective, and I hypothesize that the onset of the fracture will increase the Cronin Syndrome's rate of progression exponentially. I've been trying to make, take a more calculated approach at finding a permanent cure for Paul's sickness, but Martin Hatch has sh uh, shifted all the necessary resources into our tech division instead. I'm beginning to question his behavior. Every attempt I've made to discover a cure has been met with Martin's red tape. Just between us, I do start to wonder if Martin even wants Paul to be cured. I've looked into Martin's past. He began work for Monarch in 2001, but I couldn't find any records about his past or any aspect of his life before then. It's almost as if he just appeared out of nowhere. He was the only one present during the accident that claimed Dr. Kim's life. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I do wonder what his agenda truly is. Regarding your question, unfortunately there is, no no there is nothing of value in Dr. Kim's lab aside from Paul Serene's treatments and confidential files that would be of no use to your research. We will have to find another way to develop a cure. Hmm. So do people not know that he has to take his... those little eye drops? Maybe he time traveled into the past before, or maybe they just assume well, that he has to take those because of his Chronon... or Chrono Trigger, or fucking well, uh, Chronon Experience here. Uh, exposure here. The Sudden Stop, the final Alex Casey novel by Alan Wake. This copy is signed by the author and dedicated to Emily Burke. <sighs> Yo, you got a, co a signed copy by Alan Wake? Wow. Too bad he disappeared years ago. No one's seen him since. Okay. Uh, what's going on here? Beth, they're saying that William and Jack Joyce have both been detained. Did you manage to get to William first? Did he reveal the location of the countermeasure? You said you could get Jack out of there. What happened? Interesting developments over here. With the, the team focused on the university op, I managed to dig through an old email correspondence between Paul Serene and Dr. Kim. The content of the message is very cryptic, but before he died, Kim was running some kind of test from his lab, and William's research and a device related to this were somehow connected to what he was doing. Did he know about the countermeasure? 
I think I need to get into Kim's lab and find out more, but that place has been on restricted access since he died. Not a lot of choice, though. If Jack and William are in custody, then that lab may be our only lead left. I'm just not sure how to do it. I sure as hell can't just ask somebody to let me in there. Fiona, William Joyce is dead. Our only shot at stopping this thing is Jack. He can lead us to the countermeasure. I still believe that. Serene got to Jack first at the university. Too much heat for me to intervene. He's being moved to Ground Zero. I'm following the convoy there and we'll rescue him once his transport is past security checkpoints. Not going to be easy, but it might be our only shot. Keep Charlie Wincott distracted so he's not looking over the security feeds. My cover won't last much longer. You need to be my eyes on the inside. Huh? I agree you should look into Dr. Kim's lab and let me know what you find. I know getting access will be difficult, but with the gala tonight, you might have a window. Might be able to steal Dr. Emerald's keycard? I will contact you once I'm on the other side. So that's how come she went in there and asked that dude out to the gala. Because she's not going to show up. He got fucked. He got mind fucked, and I called that during, during the scene. Doing that uh, live action stop. Okay. I'm just going back here for my Chrono Source. No, come on. I like how much graffiti is here. Did people graffiti this place after the incident? Or before the incident? I guess that's going to be a little bit hard to tell, considering we don't have the full history of this place. Oh well. It doesn't truly matter to anything else. Just a little bit of mild curiosity. Yeah. Jack. You Sweet. have to understand that Will forced my hand. What the hell happened to you? There's no use fighting. You killed him! I'll explain when the time is right. You'll meet me tonight at the Monarch Gala. Gala? Time's ending and you're having a fucking party. Because when time ends, my plan... We do this now. I'm not meeting yes, you at... Yes, you are. I've already seen it happen. Seen what? What's this all for? Goodbye, Jack. No! I agree. No! Get to Serene at the dry docks. Ah, that's what the helicopter's here for. They're gonna try and stop him. Jerks. Ah, oh, boy. All right, hold up. We still got more information to read up. Oh, this is a long one. Okay. Sir, I've been thinking about Liam Burke. I know you've... You've worked closely with him for a while now, and he's been useful, but there are assignments we can't use him for because of his insufficient security clearance. For instance, having to keep him in the dark about much of what will happen to the university, about the stars we're expecting, and, while we're, and where we'll lead, makes him a far less effective field operative than I'd prefer, cause, and causes quite a bit of log logistical difficulty, given that he's still going to be a part of the operation. And frankly, it feels like wasted potential. I'd like you to consider the possibility of bringing Burke into the fold. He's completed most of the striker training, and even though he didn't finish the program, he made an impression on me as a tremendously capable asset. His service record is exemplary, and he has a well-earned reputation as somebody who gets things done, no questions asked. By the same token, I would love to include Burke in our long-term plans. We could use a man like him in our corner, and I could deploy him far more effectively. Let me know what you think. Okay. Clarice to Marnhatch. Hmm. Clarice. I understand why you'd consider Mr. Burke an asset to our future plans. Unfortunately, while he is an exceptional individual, he is less suitable for the kind of duties you have in mind than may be immediately obvious. I'll explain. Yes, he's been trained as a striker, but Mr. Burke was disqualified, and for good reason. The men we have chosen to be strikers have strict physical requirements, a certain moral flexibility, and the kind of killer instinct you have to be born with, cultivated to a fine degree, a ferocious knack for survival. Mr. Burke certainly has those qualities. He wasn't disqualified from the striker program because he lacked them, or because he couldn't wrap his head around the technical aspects of operating the technology. In fact, his performance was exceptional. So I fully agree with you that he's an impressive operative. But strikers, by their very nature, have to be made aware of Project Lifeboat and its purposes. Or its purpose, at least on a general level. And that means they have to be able to accept its implications. Unfortunately, Mr. Burke has a deep attachment to his wife, and the fact is that even if we brought Mr. Burke in, that wouldn't guarantee a spot for her in the program. To be, to be blunt, we don't need any more nurses, and we're already at capacity overall. We need Mr. Burke, but we don't need his wife. Mr. Burke would never accept that particularly now that Mr. and Mrs. Burke is pregnant. Therefore, it's vital that he doesn't understand the nature and scope of the threat we face. As for having him play a role in other aspects of future developments, I suspect that despite his seemingly a amoral nature, Mr. Burke may have other qualms he's not conscious, consciously aware of. If he ever has to truly make a choice between conflicting loyalties, he may take a stand on principle and elect to act against his own best interests. 
that's not a chance I'm willing to take. Uh, and what does Clarice have to say about that? Sir, given the very recent events at the Dry Docks, I now see exactly what you mean. Clearly, you were right about Burke's loyalties being more fickle than they appeared. Of course, we have plenty of unanswered questions about how it came to this. To begin with, I don't see why Burke would be involved with Joyce. There's no way he did it out of some kind of altruistic urge. There has to be more to it. We know Burke didn't divert Joyce's transport, since whereabouts at that time were accounted for. So there has to be somebody else involved, too. I'm looking into it. It was Beth! There was somebody else! And you guys are fools for thinking it's him! Although he did knock out all the other guys, but that's because they were pointing guns and shit. And they were gonna arrest him! So he just kinda delayed the inevitable, I guess. But he did let... He did let Beth out. Which is good for us, because it allows us to actually progress the plot. There you are! You were hidden! Very coy. I probably have another thing, because I think we're, we're reaching the end of this particular level. That is a shame. I think in order to have- in order to get the other one, I have to, like, restart the level. That's not happening. Uh, Alright. Oh, God damn, how much fucking reading? Can't you just, like, show and not just tell? Liam Burke Psych Evaluation. Martin. First of all, you have to, again, register my objection. What you have- or what you are having me do under the guise of psych evaluation is a blatant violation of Liam Burke's doctor-patient confidentiality. And the only reason I'm doing this is because you leave me no other choice. Now, I recognize that in the world- uh, in the world to come, our current rules and legislation, even our standards of morality, may no longer be ap applicable. But we aren't there yet. You and Mr. Serene are placing the long-term mental well-being of hundreds of individuals in my hands. And I'm telling you right now, if they don't trust not only me, but the system that puts us all in our particular positions, there's no way we can recover from it. On to Burke. It is my considered professional opinion that the man is a bit of a powder keg. For his calm exterior, he's under tremendous pressure. I understand your reasoning for pulling him out of the striker program, but what you have essentially done is instill in him a sense of encroaching due. He doesn't know this in specifics, obviously. He didn't make it far enough in the program to be briefed on that, but he knows that we're preparing for a future threat that is somehow related to the flow of time being interrupted, and that there are dangers out there, dangers that we have been specifically training- been, uh, have specifically been training the striker units for. There are men who are con uh, content to merely follow orders and let others worry about the consequences. Burke is not one of them. He is willing to commit acts of violence without asking why, but don't mistake that lack of qualms for blind obedience. Burke needs agency. He has a fundamental need to feel in control of his life, and you have put him in a position where that's no longer possible for him. He's good at seeing patterns and drawing accurate conclusions from the facts available to him, and he has deduced, quite correctly, that he is being trained for a specific scenario that Monarch believes will happen. He is also painfully aware of the fact that if and when that scenario arrives, he will not be a part of the solution. He understands the nature of the striker he suits that they are only useful in a zero-state situation, and he understands that in such a situation, a man without a striker suit is essentially dead. He doesn't know about the life co uh, lifeboat protocol, obviously, but if he did, he'd then also know he's not a part of it. Either way, the bottom line is that he's in a hopeless situation. He fears that the end of the world is coming, and he knows that if it does, the only way he could survive is with the technology Monarch has denied him access to. He doesn't understand the details, or even the exact nature of that end of the world, but that just makes it worse. Fear and lack of understanding breed tremendous anxiety, Mr. Hatch. He may not show it, but believe me, Burke feels it for himself and for his family. It may interest you to know that his wife is pregnant. You can understand how that adds to the pressure. To be honest, given the parameters we're operating under, I don't know how to resolve this. In Burke, you have, tremendous, you have a tremendously efficient operative, but you've put him in an impossible situation. I believe he will remain effective as long as he doesn't have reason to believe the scenario he fears is imminent. But once he believes it has arrived, all bets are off. That is, unless you can give him hope of survival. But at this point, resentment and suspicion are starting to turn into paranoia, and frankly, I'm not sure he would trust either of us anymore. And speaking of trust, I recommend you think about what I said in my opening paragraph, Martin. Our greatest challenge and our greatest assets in the subjective years to come won't be technological, but all too human. Don't make the mistake seeing people as just entries on a spreadsheet. You know, I have to agree with the doctor. You done fucked up. You, you, you made a really useful operative super paranoid by saying, Hey, you know this training program? You're just disqualified. Don't go anywhere. But what about the time travel stuff? Yeah, just don't worry about it, dude. It'll be fine. You won't die. Oh, God. Why is there so much to read? <laughs> Dumb, you don't have to read it, God. Well, I do like learning more about what's going on, so that at the very least we have some more context. So we know that 
You know, stuff like, oh, they trained him for the striker suit stuff, and the striker suit are the, those guys we fought, and it brings to light more questions, like, why would you need there to be zero suit dudes to fight against anybody? Why do they need to be armored up? Is the end of the world gonna involve crazy shit that shows up in zero state? I don't know. Anyways, let's read this. Amy Ferrero. What up, fools? So I looked up Amy Ferrero. She checks out pretty much how you'd expect. Good grades, no student lows because daddy's got money. Popular, the classic, I'm better than you because I care so much package. Not studying anything even remotely useful in a world where you gotta work for a living. She's into this whole activist lifestyle, always protesting this or that, and generally just hugging every tree and saving every whale she sees. Yawn. On average, she signs two petitions a week and generally spends half her life sticking her nose in other people's shit. Credit where it's due, she's pretty good at it. Also, she's got a lot of friends who are all into this stuff, and she seems to be real good at keeping them coordinated, or getting them coordinated. Kind of makes her perfect for our purposes, because if you can talk her into saying what we want, there's a lot of folks who are going to listen. No boyfriend or girlfriend. I don't know which way she swings. Why doesn't she put that on the internet? Doesn't she know what like, that's what it's for? <laughs> but there's that family of hers. Looks like she's got real close ties. So if we need leverage, that's where you'll find it. You may want to make sure she stays on our side, though. Like I said, she's pretty popular with the rest of these people, and if they get the idea she's been screwed over, they just might get pretty mad. You know how these neo-hippie, bleeding heart hipster types are? Always up in arms about something. Holy shit, I'm glad I'm not in school anymore, Charlie. <laughs> Goddamn millennials, ugh. Ooh. Giving me access to a bunch of weapons, are ya? Isn't that interesting? It's almost like we're gonna have a big fight over here soon. Hmm. Sir. Holy shit! Holy shit! He just fucking slammed a, a ship into me, dude! Oh my god! <sighs> Holy shit! Gotta move. Come on! So it looks like he can accelerate time for a specific area. That's an insane ability to have. That's okay, because I can reverse time for a scenario. Oh god. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, that, that looks like fun. Yeah, just slam down and then I'm gonna accelerate through. Okay, can't time stop it, get to learn. <laughs> I was so concentrated on doing that, I almost got squashed. The stutters were getting bad. Me shifting back and forth without warning. At the time, I didn't think it could get much worse. But we both know it did. <sighs> I got squashed. <sighs> Hard to avoid something I didn't know was coming, right? Jesus Christ. Where am I now? Oh. Oh, this is bad. We gotta reverse the time. Okay. They do this all over again. Stutters were getting bad. Be shifting back and forth without warning. At the time, I didn't think it could get much worse. But we both know it did. I'm not a big fan of this uh, interview in the future, talking about stuff to come kind of storytelling. It doesn't really add much to the overall story so far. He's just like, oh, we know it's coming. 
Shit's gone bad, but we already know about all that. That's gonna work. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is a treacherous environment. Okay, alright. I just gotta climb up. And jump across. Or maybe not, I'm not sure. I do gotta get the fuck out of here though. Yeah, if the stutters could just, like, leave shit in place, that'd be great. Whoa, uh -oh. That's a no! Oh, oh, oh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one way to change up the environment around the player. Need to get the hell out of here. Just reverse and unreverse! Holy shit! All around them! As <laughs> stuff gets crushed. They planned for this. They knew a player would probably end up falling down, and I am that player. <laughs> or maybe that was the way we were supposed to go. I'm not entirely sure. <sighs> okay. Keep going. Oh. How much more of this place is gonna get destroyed? Oh, no, 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 not again. Oops. Well, that was lame. <laughs> also, what the fuck is a quantum break ripple? <laughs> we haven't run into any of those, I think. No, 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 not again. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it just keeps falling around me, man. Yeah, no, raise up and let me through. Ah, oh, shit. Striking units! You know there's a fucking ship falling down on us! I'd rather not be in the way of it when it's done. At least these guys have weak armor for now. Well, that's gonna change up soon enough, isn't it? Ow, God damn it! Oh no, that guy's fucked completely. There's nothing you can do. I'm stuck! No! Ooh, we're good. We're fine. We're fine. I'm using- I've used up like all of my fucking abilities. Holy shit. Oh. Okay, all right. There's like two more enemies, maybe one. It's just one. Oh, you're fucked. Oh my. <laughs> been on her way to meet me. I expected she was frozen somewhere up there, by the side of the dry dock. You assume, which means she probably isn't frozen. She's actually just waiting around in the stars, but that can't be true, right? Because technically, we stole her gun earlier, which means she can't keep moving in those time stutters. It's a very, very important thing to know. But maybe there are just time stutters that you don't notice, right? I mean, there have been a couple that we've passed up earlier on when we saw that people were getting shot at the university, but... We couldn't see why, we heard sounds passing by us. But we weren't in any time starter at the time. Not really sure. My exact words were don't do anything stupid. I've never been a great listener. Well, time to start. Get in. What if I don't trust you? Then shoot me. Sorry, but I'm taking the van. Ah! That's for not listening to me back there. Ow. You want to stop time from breaking down? You need my help. And thanks, by the way, for the plus one in the back seat. I'm starting to feel like goddamn babysitter. Babysitter? What? 
kidding me? I got good intel off that computer. Bitch. My ride, my music. Deal with it. Who the fuck are you people? <laughs> to be fair, that wasn't my full fault. That was totally all on Paul Serene. Jesus. Bradbury swimming pool. What's going to take place in the swimming pool, senpai? Are we going to make another hard choice that's going to affect the story and the live action segment slightly? Or are we actually not going to do that just yet? I don't know.